morning. I'd like to talk today about uh, Westpac's growth forecasts for 2021 and 2022. Back on the 16th of August, when we released our last set of forecasts, we forecast that the, the economy would contract by 2.6% in the September quarter, but bounce back by 2.6% in the December quarter for growth over the year of 2.2%. That was based upon New South Wales remaining locked down until the end of, until the end of October, but Victoria reopening early in September. Now, since then, of course, the situation in Victoria has deteriorated very, very substantially. And this week, the Premier announced that the Victorian target was being moved to a vaccination target rather than a zero cases target. It looks like Victoria and New South Wales are on track for 80% vaccination by the end of October. And so that now becomes our forecast for Victoria. So Victoria to be effectively locked down until the end of October along the lines of the, our New South Wales forecast. That means that Victoria in the September quarter is likely to contract by about 5.7% compared to the 8.3% for New South Wales. And of course, that's because Victoria only locked down on the 8th of August, whereas New South Wales was locked down for the whole quarter. We've also lowered our forecast for the pace of recovery in the December quarter. We did have the December quarter growing at 2.6%. But with the surge in cases in New South Wales and Victoria, when we do get the reopening, we expect that governments will be cautious because of the concerns about pressure on the hospital system. It's also likely that individuals will be cautious to go back to their original spending patterns that we saw in the rebound in the second half of last year. So we think there'll be some caution in November and December. We also don't expect Queensland and Western Australia to reach their 80% targets until well into December and therefore likely that both those borders, the Queensland border, Western Australian border will be closed for the rest of this year. So a deeper, a deeper hole in the economy in the September quarter and a slower recovery. And unfortunately what that suggests to us is that whereas we thought growth over the whole of 2021 was going to be 2.2%, we're now looking at zero. What does that mean for the unemployment rate? Well, we did have the unemployment rate increasing to 5.6% at the end of October and then coming back to 4.9% by the end of the year. With that deeper hole in, um, in, in out to October, but with most of that adjustment in the labour market happening in hours worked and participation, we're still happy with that 5.8% unemployment peak at the end of October, but with the recovery being so much more muted, the unemployment rate by the end of the year is at 5.4% rather than the 4.9% we had before. But it's not all bad news. Uh, something that gives me a lot of comfort are the surveys that we've seen in our consumer sentiment survey and elsewhere, indicating that resistance to vaccination in Australia is only at about 10% of the population. That compares with well over 20% in the US. So I think that as the benefits of being vaccinated really starts to resonate with the Australian population through to the end of this year into next year, we've got a very good chance of getting our vaccination rates up to about 90%. And that'll restore Australia to being one of the countries that's dealt best with the virus as we were in 2020 but of course one of the countries that lagged behind in vaccination so badly through much of 2021. So as we go into 2022, if we're up at that level of vaccination and the proof that vaccination really does constrain the number of new cases, the real rebound in Australia will gather a lot of momentum during 2022. Think about growth in the year to June this year, 9.6%. And that was the rebound from the sharp contraction in the June quarter last year. Well, we're going to get that big sharp contraction in the September quarter and in part of the December quarter this year. So the rebound I'm expecting in 2022 at 7.4% is eminently achievable. And if we do get that sort of a rebound, the unemployment rate coming down from 5.4 to 4% by the end of that year is very much within the realms of possibility. 
Think about how far the unemployment rate has fallen in the last year, from 7.6% to 4.6%. That's three percentage points. So if 2022 is a year of 7.4% growth and 1.3% fall in the unemployment rate, compared to what we've just come through of 9.6% and a 3% fall in the unemployment rate, we are in good shape to achieve those objectives. But of course, with COVID, the, issue, the, the risks are much greater than in a normal business cycle recovery. We don't know whether there'll be another form of virus that'll prove to be resistant to the current vaccines. We don't know how effective these vaccines are, both in terms of number, amount of effectiveness and the length of the effectiveness. And of course, we don't know what the impact of a surge in COVID overseas might do to domestic growth. So undoubtedly the 7.4% has risks associated with it, but it remains our central case. The second topic I wanted to discuss is the Reserve Bank policy meeting, which will occur tomorrow on the 7th of September. The market is very much interested as to whether the Reserve Bank will continue with its commitment to taper its bond purchases further. Um, they adopted that policy in July, confirmed it in August, and the tapering, tapering is scheduled to begin in the first week in September. My view is that given that the economy has deteriorated substantially, even since the August board meeting, bear in mind at the August board meeting, Victoria was still open, New South Wales was registering 200 cases a day, and the board was advised that the, the 2021 growth was gonna be 4%, and the September quarter was gonna be a minus one. Well, we've moved on a long way since then. And the board's commitment to responding to the state of the economy at the time, rather than basing policy around forecasts, which has proved to be a disappointing, a disappointing strategy for some time, I believe they should respond to what we're seeing now and increase the stimulus, not withdraw the size of the stimulus. So I would like to see them actually increase their bond purchases. The market is divided as to whether they'll actually delay their taper or indeed continue with the taper. Delaying the taper is something I think should certainly happen. But if you want to send a signal that the Reserve Bank is committed to helping this Australian economy get out of this hole and basing their policy actions on what they're seeing now, then I think increasing their purchases would be a good policy to take. Markets also talk about the lack of supply of bonds. But bear in mind that the cost of supporting the household and business sector during this downturn is going to be significant. It won't be the 90 billion that we saw from JobKeeper, but I think it'll get up to, to at least 40 billion. And then with the economy itself growing much more slowly than the budget estimates of four and a quarter percent, then the automatic stabilizers will mean that the budget deficit will blow out anyway. So I think there'll be plenty of scope for more bonds to be issued eventually and for the Reserve Bank not to be crowding out the bond market, as may be the reason why they decide to maintain their taper policy. So tomorrow will be interesting, but the most important issues are around how this growth outlook looks, how strong the recovery, the recovery is going to be next year and what those risks are. Thanks very much.